I want to talk to you about some behaviors that you may not be aware are actually trauma responses. Now, I'm not talking about big T trauma, like earthquakes, fires, car accidents, things like that. I'm talking about small T trauma, the sort of daily bubbling under the surface things that go on when we're growing up, because this comes from what I'm about to talk about comes from childhood developmental trauma. So many of us have experienced it. It's very covert. We're not even aware that we experienced it. And I'm going to explain that a little bit more. But let me just start with um, the first one. The first one is so many people suffer from this. And I'm going to use the word suffer because there is a lot of suffering in this. And that is perfectionism. Perfectionism is actually a trauma response. It's, it's a personality adaptation. It is not a personality trait that you've been born with because very little are we born with. We're born with things like I have blue eyes and red hair and I'm tall. That's genetic. But most of our personality comes from the epigenetics of our lives, which means the lifestyle, the container that we grew up in that sort of forms and shapes who we are. And perfectionism is definitely one of them. You were not born believing that things were perfect. I can promise you that. And first of all, perfection is a con. It doesn't exist. It really doesn't exist. I've been on this earth probably longer than most of you watching this, and I can tell you that it doesn't. I thought my children were perfect when they were born, which for a moment they were, and they grow up and they become humans and they become perfectly imperfect, which is what I believe all of us humans are. And that is exactly okay. However, some people walk around with these personality adaptations because their needs weren't, they weren't seen and heard and acknowledged in a way that they needed to be when they were growing up. So their needs weren't met, not blaming the parents because a lot of this is the stressors that the parents are dealing with and it's not a conscious choice that they make. So what is perfectionism? It's actually a very, very high level of expectation of first of all self and secondly of others. And I have suffered from this for years. I actually wasn't aware of it for a very long time in, until I started doing this work. And it sort of hit me right between the eyes because I thought, it was other things. I didn't think I was a perfectionist because I'm, you know, I didn't have traits like other perfectionists had, but it doesn't necessarily work from work like that. You don't need to have obsessive compulsive disorder to be deemed a perfectionist. How it shows up is in childhood, you probably weren't, there's, there's several reasons, but one of them is you probably weren't allowed to make mistakes. And if you did make mistakes, you might have had a harsh and critical parent or caregiver that didn't let you forget it. And sometimes those parents caregivers were living vicariously through you and struggling with their own failures. And I don't like using that word because I think failure is not actually failure. I think it's feedback and we then can build on that. So they were struggling with their own, let's say inadequacies, inabilities, regrets, whatever, and they want you to be perfect. So they, they actually sort of get in your mind, this critical parent. And even when they're not around, they're still there. Parents who constantly compare you to others, it doesn't necessarily need, need to be your siblings. It can be, uh, children that you grow up with, um, children that they know that you don't know, like so-and-so's son is, doing a PhD at Harvard, why can't you do that? You know, and I'm, that's later in life. I'm talking about when we're actually much younger and in primary school and sometimes even in kindergarten or reception classes, parents will compare us to others and they think it's motivational. Um, parents who micromanaged your life and wanted to control things. This is where perfectionism can come from for you because you respond to that and you want to create harmony. I have some clients that we talk about this and they wanted to create harmony 
all the time. They didn't want conflict. They hated conflict. So they sometimes told jokes to do it, or they were very deferential and, and just agreed with everything, and or they were the kid in the family that didn't make any waves. Um, sometimes it comes from parents that were harshly judged and punished themselves for making mistakes. So as I said earlier, they're living this through you, and they they want to be a much better parent for you. They don't want these things to happen to you. And that's what they tell themselves. However, they can put so much pressure on the child. And this you may relate to is something that happens to a lot of children is when they really want to be something and the family doesn't want them to be that thing. So I remember working with somebody and they wanted to be an actress and their father wanted them to be a lawyer. Big divide. And they really struggled trying to convince, and it was trying to convince their father and their mother that acting was the way to go. But there was a lot of what we sometimes refer to as emotional blackmail, and this daughter eventually went off and studied to be a lawyer. Now, when I met her, she was deeply unhappy. However, becoming a lawyer got her a lot of attention in her family. The, the needs that she didn't have met growing up to be seen, to be heard, to be acknowledged for the things that maybe, maybe being in plays or, or dancing or singing, they weren't so much valued in her family. Her family val valued academia. So she got a lot more attention and that felt good. So that's what motivated her to carry on doing it but she was deeply, deeply unhappy. Rigid home, home environments, free of joy and spontaneous activity, they can also cause us to feel very pressured and we need to be perfectionists. We, sometimes a child can be clumsy just because that's how they're growing up. They're, I mean, I'm personally, I was very clumsy. I'm very tall and there were times in my life where one thing hadn't caught up with the other and my arms and legs were longer than anything else. So I would knock things over and that wouldn't go down very well. That would be you silly child, you clumsy child. And what I did is I became the good child, meaning that not that my brother was bad, but I wanted to do everything right so that I got no bad attention. I only wanted good attention. And I must be perfect in order to be accepted and loved. So. That's how mine manifested. It became this desire to be perfect. Now, the other two behaviors that I'm going to mention are hypervigilance and hyperindependence. Now, these are all, they're sort of the holy trinity that's within this need to have our needs met and being perfectionist. And hypervigilance is when we are always on guard when we were hypervigilant, and I, I definitely was this for years, still am working on it. I was so sort of nervous. They used to say, you're so nervous that if somebody dropped something and there was a loud bang, I would jump because I had learned, or my nervous system had learned how to be on guard. And I wanted to get there before they did. So in other words, I wanted to not do something wrong and not be shouted at. So I was always on the lookout for a possibility of me doing something wrong. And I know some of you relate to this because I, I talk about this with my clients. So I created this hypervigilance, which actually creates a trauma body. So um, for example, I ended up having a very racy heart, um, something called atrial fibrillation, where it, it goes out of sync and goes out of rhythm. And it's non-pathological, which means there is no physical reason why I have it. It is purely emotional. So we can actually create some health issues for ourselves with our hypervigilance. And finally is hyperindependence. So what happens to the child is the child learns to do as much as they can for themselves and they stop asking for help. In fact, so many of them never learn to ask for help. It's okay, I can do everything. I, I don't wanna be a problem. I don't wanna be an inconvenience. I don't wanna make waves. I'll just do everything myself. And then 
there's this vicious cycle. We do it not well, and then we beat ourselves up because it's not perfect. So there we go. We've gone right back to the beginning of the cycle. So perfectionism fires off hypervigilance and hyperindependence, but once you get all of those three going, they're linked and they're seamless and you can't see a beginning, a middle or an end. So I hope this has helped this very brief explanation of three behaviors that we develop when our needs aren't met and we sometimes think that these are just organic inside of us, they're not. The beauty of this is they all can change, they all can heal. It's not necessarily like that, that you switch them on and switch them off, it takes time, but it sets you free. So thank you very much for joining me today for this. Stay safe and I look forward to seeing you soon.